Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God. Father, I just thank you this morning, Father, for this session, Lord God. I thank you this morning, Father, for your grace and your mercy and your peace. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the only one that touches our life in the way you do. You are glorious and magnificent, God. And, Father, your mighty power is released in this earth towards us. Welcome, welcome to Morning Prayer Live. Amen. Coming to you from the beautiful parish of St. Mary on this wonderful island of Jamaica. <clears throat> you may see a little bit different format this morning. <laughs> Well, I am testing some new software. Well, it really isn't new software. I've had this software for maybe two years. I just really haven't gone out and done anything with it. Good morning, Brother Devlin, Brother... Um, I saw Tyrone, Stephanie, Paula. Saw you all coming on this morning. Wonderful to have you with us. And uh, But this software is it, it's called The Producer, and so I've kind of been tailoring it finally to, to work. So you see the streamer on the bottom. Um, you see our logo and all of that. Well, thank God. Now we need a little bit better camera <laughs> to work on it. But God is so good to give us the opportunity to do what we're doing. Amen. This morning, I want to ask you to join us, to be a partner with us. This is Acts Mission Jamaica. And uh, we just so appreciate all of you that are a part of this ministry, um, whether you are a financial partner, and we would love you to be one, whether you are a prayer partner, and we would love you to be one. <coughs> you know, somebody, I, I, I'm just amazed at the people. We have several people, for example, like Stephanie Ruth, um, several people in Australia, my God, and several people in, 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 in England, I mean, folks all across the Caribbean, and then other places across the world, from Europe to the Middle East to the African continent, people that are just there that pray with us. Um, good morning, Cedrica. Good to have you on with us this morning. Amen. That's Jamaican, by the way. This morning. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to have you all again. I, I want to talk about something this morning, and I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I'm kind of excited about the new software and all of this stuff going on. Amen. We don't have music today because I am still... If you see the wires around me right now, you would understand why. <clears throat> because I'm trying to wire the laptop to the camera and uh, about a bunch of, to, to the, uh, the soundboard. And, <clears throat> and not that I can't do it, um, because I've done it many times, but it takes a little bit of effort to make sure that they're all wired together and then to test them. I was up at 3 o'clock this morning in here, in this room upstairs, working on it, and I finally decided to do it this way because I was going to use something else. But, um, but thank God, amen? Uh, but I want to talk about a topic this morning that the Lord brought to my heart after Sunday's message. And if you haven't seen it yet, I want you to go and you know, find Sunday's message. It's on YouTube. It's on um, Facebook. Go find it. You know, it, it, is resur it is about the resurrection power of God. But I don't believe it's a resurrection message or a resurrection Sunday message that you've ever heard before. <clears throat> because what I talked about was what resurrection power released in the earth caused to happen to you. And it was not just the fact that you were given the privilege of becoming you know, a member of the body of Christ. There was something that was so key to the release of resurrection power to effect, not affect, 
but to effect, that is to create, to move you into ultimate divine destiny. And divine destiny, not just to be around here and be born again and to walk around and say Jesus is Lord and to maybe testify to a, two, to a few people and get them born again <clears throat> or to be a minister. There is an ultimate destination for all of us in the kingdom of God. And if you go back and you listen, you will hear how I talk into, uh, talk from rather, um, Revelation 19 and Revelation 22. How Revelation 19 and Revelation 22 and several other places talk about you in end time ministry. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Talks about you and what God does for you, my God. Amen. And so I, I really encourage you to go back and listen to that. <clears throat> but after the message, Hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Somebody is feeling really down and depressed. I don't know who. It may be somebody that's on now, or it may be someone that will be on later. But you're feeling really down and depressed. I want to encourage you this morning, and I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for that individual, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that the very presence of God would overshadow them. I thank you, Lord God, that men and women that know them, Father, will call. Father, will, Father God, engage them today because they are alone and they feel so alone. Father, I thank you this morning that you strengthen that individual, Father, that you, uh, Father God, you just pour into their life today. And you allow them, Lord God, to truly walk, Father God, in the presence and atmosphere of the joy of the Lord. Father, I thank you, I praise you, and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, as I said, I want to talk about something. Um, after the service on Sunday... There was something that came to my mind. I was just lying there, you know, I, I went out, I was doing some things in the backyard, you know, my farming. And as I was doing that, the Lord began to speak with me. But then I came up and I was just sitting in my bedroom for a while. And as I sat there, the Lord began to say something to me. He said, do you realize that many people when they hear you speak. Now, I, I had never thought of it, because, I, you know, most of us, when we hear and we know what God gives us, <clears throat> we are excited and we are ready to share it. Right, Sister Paula? Um, Paula Sewell. Um, we, we are ready to share it. We are ready to just give it out. And when we give it out, one of the things that happens is that um, we expect everybody to be excited and everybody to really you know, engage it, everybody begin to use it. And a lot of times when you are around people one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, you recognize that a lot of people are not as excited you know, about the word that you just got like you are. <laughs> but I have, I mean, sometimes hundreds of people out there that are viewing, I know I don't know everyone that views it, but you know, I mean, people are out there viewing these videos and uh, and uh, I don't know what their particular reaction is, except, <laughs> yes, Sister Paula, I see that, except um, that, you know, um, the Lord will share something with you about their reaction. Well, this is what he said. He says, do you know that there are many people and uh, that will hear the word that you give and after the first five minutes, they'll turn it off. After the first 10 minutes, they'll turn it off. After the first 15 minutes, they'll turn it off. And they never get the full revelation or the full effect of what you've shared. And I stopped for a moment and I thought about it. Because, frankly, there are, I mean, I've done the same thing as I've listened to people. Sometimes it is because, you know, a particular... Um, word that they have spoken has hit me, so I put it on pause. And sometimes I get back to it, sometimes I may not. But I put it on pause. But it's not because I'm uninterested. It is because something has really hit me in that scenario at that moment in time. Well, but not always is that the case. There are people that just don't 
get it and don't want it. And, uh, and for whatever reason, they are discouraged, they are dissatisfied, and they don't or they cannot appreciate the teaching <clears throat> and the strengthening that comes from a session like this or from a Sunday morning preaching session that we have had. So I want us to take a look at it for just a moment. I want you to turn with me, if you would, to the book of Second or rather First Corinthians, the book of First Corinthians, and we're going to look at what Paul, the Apostle Paul, everybody knows who the Apostle Paul is, everybody respects the Apostle Paul, everybody knows <coughs> the power of revelation that was given to the Apostle Paul. By the way, do you realize that my voice is doing better? Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to God. Amen. Um, but uh, this morning we want to look at Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church and the second chapter of that letter. <laughs> mm. Yes, Sister Stephanie, <coughs> I hear you. Amen. I have some coffee here, some Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee that is just absolutely fantastic. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, verse 1 of chapter 2 says, My brothers and sisters, when I first came to proclaim to you the secrets of God, I refused to come as an expert to trying to impress you with eloquent speech and lofty wisdom. Some of my friends um, and some of the young people in church in Kingston, when I first started church there, they said that um, they said that it was sometimes a little difficult to understand me um, because I, I will use words that uh, is a little bit above their heads. But one of the things that I do, no matter what the word is that I use, I really try my best to explain that word. So not only am I using words that may be a little beyond some individual's vocabulary, but I explain it, which means that that individual gets the opportunity to expand to really expand their, um, their vocabulary. But on the other side of it, there are things that I may speak about that are a little bit more in depth than you might have heard from your pastors, your other teachers, or just even from your own individual study. There might be things that have a greater depth, or maybe you're looking at it from a different side of the mountain when I begin to share. And so I am looking now um, at Paul's writing, and I'm saying that when I come, I, I, don't, I don't want to impress anybody, either with the way I speak, either with the words, the, the particular words I use, because how God taught me to be able to communicate to the body of Christ was an interesting scenario. What he did was he invited me to go to a church and to begin to teach four and five year old, which I did not want to do. I'll be, I'll be frank with you. I did not want to go in, I did not want to teach them because I believed that I wanted to be in some adult ministry my God, in some adult ministry, I did not want to be you know, concerned with little ones because I wanted, to, I wanted to go into the nursing homes and heal the sick <clears throat> and into the hospital and lay hands on those that were unwell. And uh, he put me in a classroom with 84 and 5 year olds. <laughs> Woo! And I had to learn how to do some things and share the gospel message in a way that was tremendously different than teaching adults. So I had to break it down in very simple terms, my God. And so what happened, thank you all for those words, but you know, what happened was that I, I understood how to put things in a way that people would, would get it, amen? But then I did not also want people to stay where they were. So what I would do, I would use things, examples and words that would begin to elevate individuals. So you're seeing some of my strategy. 
It's to elevate individuals, to bring them and pull them out. I don't want people to stay where they are. If I am in a place with God, I want to pull you along. <clears throat> I want you to come take a tour with me. I want to grab you and say, hey, come on, let's taste and see the goodness of God. I don't want anything that I have experienced to be so, you know, far-fetched and far away from you that you don't have a good understanding or the ability to apply it to your life, amen, in a practical sense. So, God gives us the ability to communicate those things in simple terms. And so Paul is saying something in similar fashion here. He says, I don't want to impress you with my eloquent speech and lofty wisdom. <coughs> he was a smart man. He had degrees up to the gazoots, you know, and, uh, and yet he makes this statement. For a while, verse 2 says, I was with you. For a while I was with you, I was determined to be consumed with one topic. And listen to what topic it was. Jesus, the crucified Messiah. I stood before you feeling inadequate, filled with reverence for God, and trembling under the sense of, of the importance of my words. The tremendous weight of the glory of God, the responsibility to share the word of God, the, 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 the sense of giving out to the people of God is something that I and people like myself hold in such high regard that we want to ensure that what we communicate is genuine, it's truth, and it's something that will change you, change us, and change the world around us. Amen? Um, good morning, my dear friend, Faye Griffith. <laughs> Miss Faye in Missouri. Amen. And, uh, and so, we take it, we take that responsibility seriously. Amen? Just like Paul is saying. <clears throat> He says what? In verse 3, I stood before you feeling inadequate, filled with reverence for God, and trembling under the sense of the importance of my words. Verse 4 says, the message I preached and how I preached it um, was not an attempt to sway you with persuasive arguments. You see, I've said that to people all the time. I don't want to persuade you in the sense from from an intellectual perspective. There are many intellectuals that know the Word of God, understand the Scriptures, can cite it, recite it, and repeat it better than I can. But even with that intellectual capacity, there is no spiritual prowess or spiritual ability that's within them because the Word of God, although it has touched their intellect, has not touched their inner man or touched their heart. And so then, it really is significant when the Word of God touches our heart. Amen? I preached it. <clears throat> it was not an attempt to persuade, to be persuasive, but to prove to you the almighty power of God's Holy Spirit. For God intended, verse 5 says, that your faith be not established on man's wisdom, but by trusting in his almighty power. So God does not want you, my friend, <clears throat> does not want you to come to him because you're afraid of something, in the sense of you're afraid of hell. That might be a part of it. God does not want you to come to him because of the coronavirus. God does not want you to come to him because of an issue okay, in your world that is so challenging to you that you feel that you've just got to get to him. No, he wants you to come to him because you understand his love, just like Job and what I shared last week. He does not want you to come, as Job did in chapter 1, in, in an apprehension, in a fear that Hey, he's going to slap you upside your head. Um, you must come to him in faith, believing that he loves you and cares for you. And you want to give him that opportunity in a covenant relationship to lead you, to guide you, to instruct you, to cover you, to sustain you as a father. 
When you do that, then there's a mutual satisfaction that comes through that relationship, my God. And that ought to be our reality. But you see what has happened, again, for God intended that your faith be not established on man's wisdom, but by trusting in his almighty power. So it's not because you know Pastor Watson. It's not because you know Faye Griffith or Satasha Richards or Paula Sewell or Nikki Bless or, you know, anyone else. It, the faith of God and the believing in God and the fullness of fellowship and relationship with him, the awesome manifestation of God's power will only be fully realized when you truly trust him. <clears throat> when you truly come to him and you wholeheartedly give yourself to him. Why did they listen to this next part of it? Verse 6. However, there is a wisdom that we continually speak of when we are among the spiritual and mature. It's wisdom that didn't originate in this present age, nor did it come from the rulers of this age who are in the process of being dethroned. Instead, we continually speak of this wonderful wisdom that comes from God, hidden before now in a mystery. It is his secret plan, destined before the ages, to bring us unto glory. None of the rulers of this present world, un world order understood it, for if they had, they never would have crucified the Lord of shining glory. <clears throat> now, I, I, I shared the scripture on Sunday. The powers that be would have never crucified Christ if they knew what the intention, the plan, and the purpose of God was with the crucifixion of Christ. But it was not just Emmanuel, God coming into the earth. It was not just Jesus Christ walking on the earth. It was not just Jesus Christ having an opportunity to come and tell you of his heavenly Father, but he was purposefully um, following a strategic plan. Now, we talk about we <clears throat> may have a five-year plan. We may talk about a 10-year plan. But God had a 2,000-year plan, hundreds of years ahead of time, God, and even prior to that, God laid out his plan. He knew from Genesis to Malachi what his plan was going to be. And every book of the Bible between Genesis and uh, that last book of the Old Testament, actually Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John included, um, he, he set up the strategic plan and began to implement each aspect of the plan to bring forth his ultimate purpose. And so eventually, it says in, in the book of John, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. So when the particular timeline had been achieved, when the date came that that event needed to take place, Number one, John was announced to Zacharias. Number two, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, <clears throat> was announced to Mary. And then, in the time of childbirth, both John the Baptist and Jesus Christ came into the earth as young ones. And you see, at the age, around the age of 30 or so, Jesus Christ um, began to walk in the fullness of his ministry on the earth. Now, I want you to understand this. You and I are walking like Christ in stepping into the fullness of the ministry that God has called us to be. And we <coughs> are being prepared in our own strategic initiative by God, because he has already marked out the milestones of our life. 
He knows what was going to happen at age five. He knows what was going to happen at age 10, at age 15, at age 20. And now what he has done, like Chandra, um, what he has done, he has put in place individuals at the various milestones or mile markers to strategically position us so that we step into the next realm, season, or opportunity of life to carry us into the ultimate divine destiny or strategic position that God wants us to be in that moment. But it requires our cooperation. It requires our participation. It does not and never, never will God twist your arm to do what is necessary and needed. Amen? And so what is going on then is that God is moving in your life and in mine, and God is really preparing us. And you see, the Apostle Paul begins to talk about the fact that he has been given revelation. He has been given information that has been hidden to the ones around him. <clears throat> but it is in Christ. And so as I begin to speak and I share with individuals, and to, to be frank with you, it is sometimes um, frustrating on the part, on my part, when I begin to share with an individual uh, I give you a good example. Oh, uh, over a year ago, a year and a half ago, I was sharing with the young people, you know, but I don't twist anybody's arm. I've shared with them how you need to save your money, how you need to invest your money, that you, you, you don't go to a quote unquote commercial bank to open a savings account and just drop your money in there because the interest rate is, is ridiculously low. So I actually took some of them to the investment organization that I use in Jamaica for our church. <clears throat> and I took them there and I had some of them open accounts and I began to tell some of them, people that are not even in our church, I began to show them how to open an account with US currency or Canadian currency, depending on what currency you, you, know, you are frequently receiving or gibberels or pounds, or, um, you know, English pounds, open that account because that account, when you receive money, you don't change out your money into Jamaican currency immediately because the value of that currency appreciates. So I've been telling them over these last several months, almost two years now, you know, telling them how to leverage their finances and how then to begin to invest, not just in saving, savings, but look at, look at a portfolio, look at the investment structure, begin to put money aside, etc., etc., etc. And I've watched one person, for example, just about every day, that individual would go to a restaurant and buy very expensive food every single day. And... Uh, now that person has no money saved. This is over a year. No money saved, nothing set aside. And that individual would want you to come and be a blessing to them and help them and take care for them and nurture them. But all of that time, and by the way, this is not a, this is not a, a child. This is somebody in their 30s. And you say, well, what, what is it could you have done? Very little. Because God gives you the wisdom, and then he gives you the responsibility to impart the wisdom. And after the impartation, it is left to the individuals to apply godly wisdom. <clears throat> that was a natural example, but on the other side of it now, what about the spiritual side of the wisdom of God? Believing the word. And we have shared the word of God, and we want each person to understand that you can hear it, but if you don't use it. You can hear it, but if you don't apply it. You can hear it to the point where you can recite it and you can say, Pastor Watson said, but then what do you say? Amen? How do you use the word? How do you apply the word? My friends, 
The power of God's word is in your tongue. It is in your mouth. The Bible says there, I, you know, listen to what Jesus said. I said, or the word said, I set before you today death and life. Choose life. Death's already chosen. Choose life. Begin to understand the word. That is, get into the word. Begin to study the word. Begin to listen to the messages. And allow the word of God to encourage your heart and fill your heart and fill your life. Let us truly be, begin to be the sons and the daughters of God that he intended us to be. Let the strategic plan of God come into being in our life in a dramatic way. If you remember on Sunday, if you watched the message, I talked about resurrection power. I talked about the awesome release of a power of heaven to pull a dead man's spirit out of hell itself and to bring him back into the physical earth, my God. And when it brought him back into the physical earth, the spirit went right back into his body. The stone was rolled away from the grave and he came out of the grave. That was Jesus Christ. But the awesome power of God was so dramatic, my God. Hmm? That awesome release of power was so dramatic. It says in the book of Matthew, that I think Matthew 22, it says in the book of Matthew that other people that were dead came out of their graves because of the release of that righteous power. I'm not talking about people that were in sin. I'm talking about the righteous men and women of God that had died in faith and believed in God in their way. What happened? They came out of the graves. And people saw them walking around. So awesome was that release of power. You know, the Apostle Paul talks about the resurrection power of God. Can you imagine that? <clears throat> because when Jesus died on Calvary's cross, at the moment, or just a few moments before his death, it says that the whole place was covered in darkness, pitch black darkness. It says that when he died, when he said, Eli, Eli, sabachthani, when he made the statement, and, and he, the Bible says he gave up the ghost, or his spirit was released from his physical body, it says that there was a great shaking. He says, it says rocks split. Uh, I, 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 can you imagine the very earth groaned, <clears throat> the very earth realized that there was a power that was getting ready to enter it that it could not contain. My God. My God. Good morning, Sister Marlene. Hey, good to see you on all the way from London, England. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, but this is the strategic initiative of God for you that this tremendous power be made available to you, that this tremendous anointing be made available to you. But we have to see it. Listen to, my, listen to me, my friends. We have to believe it. It is our choice. We can reject it. We can listen to half the story. We can listen to three quarters of the story, but we need to listen to the whole thing. I was I was getting ready um, to come upstairs to do this program this morning, and I started to think about you know preparing food. There are people that prepared food that they don't put any salt in the food, they don't put any spices in the food. There's really very little they'll put in the food, and uh, and so the food is bland. The food. To the rest of us, may we may consider it tasteless. But hang on a second. If we start to put a few spices in there, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, it flavors the food. God wants to flavor your life with his presence. God wants to flavor your life with his anointing so that Christianity for you is not the bland experience, is not the tasteless experience. It's not the experience 
you know, of some benign individual just walking through the earth and having nothing to do and nothing to say and nothing accomplished because of what God hasn't done because he has done everything for you. Amen? I'm coming up to the end of this. But I want to encourage you, join us tomorrow as we begin to talk a little bit more about the release of the anointing of God, the release of resurrection power. And what the release of that, because resurrection power is just Holy Ghost power. <clears throat> resurrection power, if we begin to look at it, as we start tomorrow, you will recognize that some tremendous things have happened. And some tremendous things are available. But it requires you and I to truly do what God um, has already set up, taking advantage of it. I want you this morning um, to really appreciate what God is doing in your life. Morning, Bill. I want you this morning to really appreciate what God is doing around you and in you. That every experience that you've been through, God is ready to use it. The bad ones or the good ones. Sometimes the bad ones came not because of God's plan and God's purpose. But they came because we were not really so obedient to what he was telling us to do. We were not so ready um, to follow his instructions until certain situations presented themselves. And then we were forced. It is never God's purpose to throw us down. One, one young lady that I know said God had to empty her of her finances so that he could show her his faith. No, he doesn't have to empty you of anything to show you something if you're obedient. If you're obedient, he will pour into you without, without any of those things or any of those negative circumstances coming into play. <clears throat> if you study without being forced, and you retain the information that you've studied. You pass your exam. And unless you don't want to study, and then somebody has to crack the whip, somebody has to push you, prod you, and uh, force you to study. But God doesn't want to do that, you know. Um, he wants you to make the choice to believe. He wants you to make the choice to be a part of his kingdom in a tremendous way so that his strategic plan for your life truly comes to pass. Mighty God, have your way in each one of our lives. Help us to walk worthy of the faith you have given us. And Lord God, I so thank you for the greatness that you are in my life and in the lives of those that are part of our family. I pray this prayer, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Protect them, keep them, Lord God. Cover them, Father God, with the blood of the Lamb, and ensure, Lord God, that their lives are preserved beyond, the Lord God, this season of testing and trial for the earth. Father, we bless your name. We give you all glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Friends, I encourage you to be a part of this ministry. We would love you to be a monthly partner with us. Uh, I will put the, uh, the links on the screen. I would love you. So many of you have known you for years. And, you know, we've been able to minister to you and encourage you. Why don't you take a moment now and ask God, God, do you want me to give back? Do you want me to support? Do you want me to do something for this ministry? And if you believe the Lord says so, come on, um, get online and, and make, make a contribution. Um, decide to become a monthly partner with us. Amen. And you will indeed receive a blessing. I'm not saying that just because you do it, God's going to bless you. God will bless you, even if you don't do it. But the fact of the matter is, maybe, maybe, just maybe, God's been talking to your heart. Just maybe the Lord has been touching you. And what you will allow us to do is to be even better and more capable of doing the work of ministry that God has called us. So I want you to think about that. And think about, hey, it could be $10, $20, $30, you know, whatever the amount is, $100, $500, $1,000 a month. You know, if the Lord has so blessed you, um, surely um, we will appreciate you sharing it with us. God is resetting so many things in the earth in this season. Um, he's redirecting finances and he's giving each one of you an opportunity to see what the source is 
of your strength. He's giving each one of us the opportunity to see it's not in the building. It's not, it's not even in this building that I'm in. Thank God that this building is here and it facilitates what we do. But it's not in the building. It is in the heart of man. It is in the men and women that God has called. And it is in the release of the strategic power, the resurrection, Holy Ghost power of God in your... <coughs> in your life and mine that will make a difference so inbox me or look on the on the feed i will have the links there you know get to stephanie dylan get to you know gail conan or, or get to myself why and they do they are in the u.s i am in jamaica you know get with some one of us and we'll give you all the links just find us at www.axchurchjamaica.org that's what www.axchurchjamaica.org or whatsapp me at 876-451-9844 that's 876-451-9844 <clears throat> if you're in Jamaica, I'd love to hear from you. In the Caribbean, I'd love to hear from you. Wherever you are in the world, just send us a message. Tell us how you're doing, especially in this season. And we continue to plead the blood of the Lamb over your life. May God's grace be upon you. In Jesus' name. Friends, have a wonderful rest of the day. And we'll see you tomorrow. And tell me how you like what we are progressing to do here in Morning Prayer Live. Amen.